Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Golden Reviewer Gaming Test. Today is the much hyped, much waited Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra Snapdragon vs Exynos Battle. As you can see here, I have the silver S21 Ultra, which is the Exynos version. And I've also imported this black version of Snapdragon 888 from Hong Kong. Both are incredible devices, both are snappy and fast, but we still want to find out which is the best. By the way, I buy all my test devices with my own money. I'm not sponsored by any manufacturer or any brands. And these devices are not cheap. I spent almost 4K Singapore dollars on them. All that is just to give you a fair, unbiased and informative review, okay? So please support me by clicking that like button, share my channel to your friends, and subscribe for future contents. Today we are going to compare the Genshin Impact game, and I'll set both devices to 60fps plus highest graphics settings. Before I start, please check out my previous video, in which I explained how the FPS meter can be wrong on, on Samsung devices, especially for Genshin Impact game. So if you see very different results from other people and me, you might consider that might be the reason. And for all my tests, I made sure that the FPS meter is giving the correct reading. So these numbers are definitely valid. Okay, just as usual, I will show 10 minutes of gameplay in Genshin Impact with the same playing style around the Nantian area, which is not affected by the bug that caused some FPS drops. If you want, you can watch this full 10 minutes footage. Otherwise, you can skip to the last part of the video where I'll show you the FPS and power consumption result.
now we've finished the test, let's take a look at our FPS. So we see that throughout the whole gameplay, most of the time, the Snapdragon S21 Ultra variant is able to maintain a higher FPS compared to the Exynos variant. And we see much uh, smoother FPS graph with uh, less frame drops and uh, it's overall a more stable gaming experience. In the end, the Exynos could only achieve 35 average FPS while the Snapdragon was able to achieve a 42 average FPS. That's about 20% higher on the Snapdragon. However, if you watch my other comparisons, you would notice that this Snapdragon performance is still not as good as those from Xiaomi or Huawei or other Android flagships. I think that is mainly because Samsung is very conservative about thermal and they'll throttle the device very aggressively to prevent the device from overheating. On the Xiaomi devices, the battery temperature can reach up to 50 degrees, while Samsung usually control it below 45. And I think that is the main reason why they are using the same SoC but the Xiaomi has a much higher average FPS than Samsung. And now if we look at the power consumption during the 10 minutes gameplay, we see that the average power consumption are almost exactly the same. It was 5.66W for the Exynos variant and 5.74W for the Snapdragon variant. It's a less than 0.1W difference which I think is almost negligible. So we understand that Samsung gives these two devices exactly the same TDP or thermal capacity or power capacity, whichever way you want to call it. That means for any long gaming sessions, both devices are allowed to heat up to the same temperature and allowed to use the same amount of power. And then when the available power for you is restricted, it comes down to power efficiency. So I think in this test, it shows that the Snapdragon 888 is still a more efficient chip comparing to the Exynos 2100 in Genshin Impact game. They use the same amount of power while the Snapdragon is able to achieve 20% more FPS. So that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.